So we're starting chapter four today, and we're starting with 4-2. We're skipping 4-1. It's not something you actually need for high school algebra anymore. And this section, I have my book open. You guys don't, but I can tell you. It's titled Relations and Functions. And we're going to write um, some things to fill in these Freyer models, and then I'll give you guys some more examples. So hopefully this makes sense uh, by the end. But there's an old phrase in math that says that all rectangles are what? Are rectangles. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, no, I said it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. All squares are I always do that backwards. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Right. Why? Let's talk about why. Because you can't perfectly draw a square. It has nothing to do with drawing, even though my drawing could come into question. What is the definition of a rectangle? Yeah, let's list it. It's got four sides. Two sides are longer and the other two sides are shorter. Of those two sides, there's two matching sets, right? Parallel. The sides are parallel. And there's one other thing that's critical. It's a quadrilateral. That's the fancy name for it. These are all quadrilaterals because quadrilaterals have four sides. Whoops, I'm off the screen and you guys did not tell me. Okay, what else is true? This is the really critical part. Jose? Oh, 90 degree angles? Yeah, if we did not have 90 degree angles, we couldn't have parallel sides and we wouldn't have matching sides. What's special about a square? It, it only has one more thing. Yeah. That means it's an equilateral quadrilateral, uh, equilateral. which we way easier just call a square. <clears throat> so let's think about this little thing that I almost messed up. All squares are rectangles because squares fit the definition of a rectangle. They have four sides. If they have matching sets, they have parallel sides, they have 90 degree angles, right? But the difference is all squares also have all the sides be the same size. Well, the same is going to be true with relations and functions. All functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. And I want you guys to almost think about this like relationships with people. Think about when people are boyfriend and girlfriend. How many people can they be dating if they're really exclusive? Three. <laughs> okay, let's, let's exclude Jose's answer from this possibility. How many people should they be dating? Just each. Three. And that would be what we call a functional relationship where they are committed to just each other. other. But are there other kinds of relationships that are not functional? Yeah, yeah. yeah we've all been around them and known people who are in them. <laughs> okay, let's now get into some of the definitions. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. That means the X, Y's are going to be really important when we're dealing with these. In a relation, a, the definition is a set of ordered pairs. Some facts or characteristics, we're gonna make a little bulleted list here because these are mini Freyer models, it just gets a little bit tight. We have ordered pairs. They can be shown in a table, the graph and or what's called a mapping diagram. Those are my favorite because they start to show the ones that have functional relationships and ones that are just relations, Whoa. meaning the cheaters. <gasps> and 
XY pairs are very important as we're dealing with these. Those are all characteristics of relations. So an example could be written like this in a table where 6 and 7 go together, 4 and 3 go together. Or we could be writing them in a set. So for instance, I could have negative 2 and 3 as an ordered pair, 4 and 5 as an ordered pair. And then when I put it in those brackets, I'm showing that those are a set. I could rewrite the set as a table, or I could take those ordered pairs and I could throw them onto a graph. Here's a non-example. What if I have a set of numbers that has an ordered pair, and maybe even another ordered pair, and then just hanging out there by itself is seven. He's that awkward fifth wheel. <laughs> In order for it to be relation, it has to be something we could graph as an XY pair. <coughs> Okay, I hope we can fit this definition into the mini Freyer model, because last time I wrote this, we did it as a big Freyer model. All right, a function is a relation. Here's where this becomes a functional relationship that assigns exactly one value in the range. We'll talk about range and domain in a minute, but the range is basically the y's. To each value in the domain which is the x's. I'm going to underline function. This function is a relation. So remember, this is like the squares and rectangles. All squares are rectangles. All functions are relations. These are just special ones, the ones that are most functional. They work the best. They're not cheating on each other. So here's what I want you to think, and this really, for me as a visual person, this helps me clarify. If I think the domain x equals a person, and the range y <coughs> equals a place. If you keep those characteristics in mind, that X's are people and Y's are places, then you'll see how this becomes a function and not just a relation. So this is what's called a mapping diagram. The domain X is the first one, and we're gonna make like a big bubble here that we're gonna put some numbers in as big a bubble as you can on this teeny tiny thing I gave you to take notes on. And over here we have the range, which is the y's. So yes, we'll be doing input-output tables to be working on these. Mm. What if I have a person named 5, another one named 7, and another one named 4? Can they all go to the same place? Sure. Yeah. Let's say they all go to 3. That's where the Halloween party is. All those X's can be assigned to the Y, but only one Y can be assigned to each X. And think of it this way. More than 
one person can be at the same place. More than one person can be at the same place. X's are people, Y's are places. Here's a non-example. If we do D for domain is X's. And let's say I put two and three. And the range is the Y. What if I have an XY pair that's two comma one and two comma four? Can I graph that? Yeah, I can. Two comma one and two comma four. And then let's say three is going to five. If this is people and this is places, for a function, can two actually be in two places at the same time? No. It can as a relation. I could still graph this, but it's not a function. Functions are special relations. They're special kinds of graphs, and you'll see this as we continue working with this. So think about this. For this to be a function, not just a relation, a person can't be in two places at the same time. The same person can't be in two places at the same time. Or if we're thinking about this as relationships and being functional, can two be dating one and four at the same time and make this work out? Maybe. No. They could. Okay. Is it a functional relationship or just a relationship? Just a it's going to fall apart when four finds out about one. <laughs> True? It depends. It depends. I'm pretty sure it's going to fall apart. All right, let's get these glued in and we are going to update our table of contents. Can you take these and pass them out? I think we mostly have enough for everybody in here.